and I'm going to talk about um, how you can use the IP system uh, to help you develop ideas or to find ideas. Um, and I'm going to be a bit more. I'm so I'm going to talk about concepts and what questions can you ask of these at the beginning, and then I'm going to show you a few practical examples where you can search for patterns. Um, has anyone anyone used patent databases before to search for anything? You have. Okay, which one? One of the uh, SpaceNet probably or yeah. Patent Scope, something like that. And what have you searched for? For um, what uh, was your question? Uh, Establish process uh, when you're defining your PhD thesis. So mm -hmm. it's a must. So you were looking for uh, what? similar things that exist or for ideas? Similar things. Okay, great. So we're doing a prior art search, as they would say in, uh, in the patent world. <laughs> but we will get to that. So, um, where do you usually search for technical information? Uh, for most of you, it's scientific papers or professional literature. Uh, many companies do some kind of um, newsletters, newspapers, and so on. Then press releases for commercial products, websites, most of the people use that, and conferences, and actually the market. But what usually people uh, don't use, but it's the biggest database of technical information, are patent documents. Um, and that's a shame, because um, and this example shows why it's a shame. So let's look at this example. It's an um, invention from a certain group at the university. It's a genet genetically engineered plant that um, changes color when it's above a landmine. So it's a quite an interesting uh, invention, which was, for most of the people um, that have read about it, was published online on this date, so end of January 2004. It was in a form of a three-page um, article, which actually stressed its results, and not really the technical details. And if you were a competitor or a company wanting to develop on this idea or actually use it in a different way, you would really need technical details. So even if you were a researcher and wanted to uh, know more about that. So actually, this was not the first published um, data about it. It was the patent application. So the patent application in this case was published almost two months before and contained 111 pages of technical data together with examples. Um, and with exact protocols. Uh, so this is an example why it is good to read patents if you're a, a person wanting to know more about these kinds of inventions. Um, and although patent applications are published a year and a half after they're actually first applied for, um, they are usually the first published information about an invention. It usually takes more than one year and a half from um, patent application to product. And also companies that patent usually wait until the publication of pa patent application, which you cannot delay, uh, before they start publishing press releases and stuff like that. <coughs> so they like to take advantage of this year and a half uh, silent period. Um, this information is very valuable if you develop things. It's a huge source of technical information because uh, different studies um, from the sides of European Union and European Patent Office have shown <coughs> that more than 80% of data is published only in patent databases. And that's because the industry usually publishes only in patent databases. They don't publish scientific papers. Um, and also, in certain fields, almost all technical knowledge first appears in patent databases, as we've shown with the example before. 
So if you want the most recent data, although it's not from yesterday, but from a year and a half ago, <laughs> still the newest things you can find out are in patent databases. But it's not only the technical information you can derive of it, but it's commercial information. You can do a lot of business intelligence um, derived from that data, and we'll see how. You can monitor competitors, industry trends, you can look for most active inventors. If you're a big company looking for a very valuable employee, you can find them by searching through patent databases as well. Because these database <coughs> databases and, and the documents themselves are very um, uniquely structured, and that's why it, um, it makes them unlike, the the, unlike a Google search, where you get all sorts of data and not classified um, on any rules. In patent databases, they are all the same form, same bibliographical information. So you can, if you know how to use them, you can navigate through them quite easily. And legal information, because maybe you find a patent and you want to know is it free to use, because expired patents or patents that haven't been granted are published in any way. All patent applications are one, in, one year and a half after they've been filed. But in some countries, like European Patent Office, runs less than 50% of patents uh, for all the applications. So 50% and more are never granted. But they are published. And maybe they contain good ideas. Um, so, and they're free to use. Also, if a patent has been granted in the US and you want to copy, basically, or improve it, and then sell it, if it's not um, registered, if, if it's not valid in Germany, for example, you have a right to sell it for, without uh, needing to get a license or something. So as I've said, all patent information must be published. That's the compromise between the state and the, and the inventor. Because the state gives you monopoly and they don't like to give monopoly, you have to give them all the technical information about your invention with the delay of 18 months after filing. So you, everything must be published. Um, the patent offices, which are usually <coughs> the institutions where you actually apply for a patent, uh, keep collections of these documents. And these are patent applications, granted patents, and expired patents. You can find everything in the databases. And they compile that, they send it into, they publish them online, they compile that in registers, which can be reached at the offices, and they also um, compile them between them themselves into huge databases, which they then um, maintain and also put online for free. So a lot of them are online and free to use, and you should use them. Um, to know how to uh, get uh, advantage from patent information, it's fine, it's useful to know the anatomy of a patent. So most of patent documents have the same look and structure. So the front page is almost always like that. There are certain uh, little differences between, let's say, the US and the rest of the world, but they're very small. And the bibliographic, these indexing data that you use for searching are almost always very similar. And also have to comply to a certain standards. So these numbers, if you see here, you can find, and you will always know what they mean. So you have the patent number. Uh, classification code, we will talk about that in a minute. Then the filing date, owners, inventors, potential countries in this uh, document, because it's a European patent, they can always uh, be extended to um, about 40 states that are uh, members of the European Patent Convention, and you never know where will they go until they are granted. So all of the states are potential designation states. Then you have the priority date. That means the date the first uh, patent application for this invention was filed. The title and abstract. 
Then after this first page, you usually have the description of the invention. This has to be uh, sufficient enough for anyone to be able to repeat the invention. So it has to be very, very detailed um, in a similar way or even more than a scientific paper would be. Um, they are usually accompanied by drawings like this one, which are then um, you have these numbers which you mention in the text and have a legend. Um, and also claims. Claims are the most important part of the patent. Not for you if you're looking for technical information, but for anyone that's interested in whether they're infringing the patent or they want to get around it. They actually, there are the sentences at the end of the patent which are very difficult to read. Um, and they define the legal, um, the legal definition. What does the patent protect? Uh, so the most important part from a legal sense of view, they give you the kind of uh, circle around your property. They define your patent right. So as I said, first page, bibliographic information, every patent has this. Claims define the scope of the patent. Often in the process of uh, granting the patent, like in patent applications, you want to protect everything, uh, usually more than you have invented. Uh, then patent examiners usually say, no, 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 this has been known for, for centuries, you have to narrow them down. So it's good to know which documents you find are patent applications and which are granted patents, because granted patents usually are much narrower in respect of scope. And also then you have figures and search reports, and this is the feedback you get from a patent examiner about the, whether your patent is new or not. And you can search for all of these bibliographical information on the, on the first side, which we've mentioned. So all of these identification numbers, uh, patent classification, which is a way to structure the patent data into technology areas. And this is also one huge uh, advantage of uh, patent databases because you don't have to look for a certain thing by name. You can look um, at a small subset of technology because you're interested in it and you can see how has it been developing in the past and where is it going right now. So you can make, you can actually monitor it from time, time to time and see what people are patenting in this small area of technology. Um, because it's hierarchically developed and you can go to narrower and narrower and narrower groups. Uh, you can also look by dates, names, and also keywords like um, uh, that unstructured data. You can do text mining from title and abstract. And questions these documents can help you answer are either technical, so what solutions to exist to a technical problem or uh, as you have searched already before, um, what is there that is close or connected to my problem? Um, any of you that does research should, should ask this question as well. Is my invention patentable? If it is, you better not publish it before you think and discuss about um, applying or filing a patent application. Um, then your technology transfer office can help you with that at your university. Then the questions can be, le can be legal if you're already producing something you want to sell, you want to check if you're infringing on another right, on another person's right. Because this can get you into trouble if you, ignorance is not um, a good way to um, handle this. It's better for you to know if you're infringing or not and then decide how to act. Um, and also a lot of business information in the sense what are my competitors doing? Um, we talked to before that it's good to have some sort of advantage over them and to see where they're going and also um, if we are entering a new field, 
We want to know who's, who are the players, who are the strong ones, um, and try to, uh, try to modify our business model. Um, so we can look for ideas, because as we said at the beginning, it's a huge source of information, larger than there, there any other. Uh, we can find solutions, check freedom to operate, very important uncover technological trends, and find out about competitors. Also, if you're a small company, you can search for strategic partners. If you're a big company, you can search for companies you would like to buy or acquire um, because you're lacking a certain technological um, area. A nice example, has anyone Try this heart rate monitor application for an iPhone or Android. I think they have it. You have? So you know that it works quite well, actually, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Discussable. Okay. <laughs> so it's, but anyway, it's hugely popular. So I think they, they've gotten what they wanted with this one. So these are two um, guys from Slovenia which one of them likes to cycle and wanted to buy a heart rate monitor, which wasn't very expensive and very, um, very tricky to get from. So uh, he had a business idea. While, so always it's, it's good to have a pain or a need to, to get ideas, obviously, from all these examples. Um, he wanted to create a mobile app to monitor heart rate and he knew he wanted to do that but he had no idea how he connected with the other guy and um, who is a technical type and they were searching through patent databases they actually found uh, an expired US patent which had the mechanism very nicely um, very nicely described and it is free to use because it's expired. Uh, they didn't have to develop a lot. They just needed to transfer it to the um, environment of mobile apps. And uh, they founded a startup, made the app, was a huge success, and now they de they're developing different apps. And also gathering uh, substantial investments um, in Silicon Valley. So, but the, the app itself is resting on an idea from a, an expired pattern. So it's, good, it's a good source for even searching for solutions for an idea, or for ideas itself. So as we said, one of the questions you can ask is, um, how can you find uh, which solutions exist for my problem? And uh, if you just type in your problem in words, you may get a lot of junk data because these databases are huge. They have almost 100 million documents in them, the, the largest ones. So how can you <coughs> get meaningful data? One of the ways you can is by searching through already mentioned pattern classifications. So you probably know which kind of uh, technological area interests you and your problem lies at. So every document is classified by experienced patent examiners, mm, which kind of put them in these small drawers. Each document is classifi in classified into many of them because everything has more to one side. Um, of um, to it every so this for example is some kind of thing that could be used to treat people then probably it's also some kind of a chemical and so on so everything is classified into different drawers so if you want to find out solutions for problems you first need to find your drawer and international patentifications, I gave you the link so you can, um, I don't think you have the 
presentations, but we're going to leave them, so I, I, I'm sure you will get them uh, by email or something. So I gave you the link if you want to search through it. These are the main groups, and you can click on it, and then you get the whole tree of groups and subgroups. Um, and you can really find what you're looking for. There are also ways to search through the classifications by terms. We won't get into details, but um, for any information, you can contact um, us or your state office, or you just go through help and you'll find information about that. Um, also, what every researcher should do before um, even applying for a new project is, is my research new and is it non-obvious? Because some estimations are that between 20 and 30 percent of all EU projects um, are to deal with things that have already been patented somewhere. So it's good to search for patent databases, not to discover hot water, as we say. And these questions are called prior art search. And um, you can use different ways to look for the answers to this question. You can look to patent classifications, also to narrow your area down, then use keywords, um, then look, search through related documents and so on. And we will see on an example of the um, biggest freely available database where you can search for that information. So when you find the relevant patents, you have to ask yourself, is the solution that you find in the patent document um, new? Is, is it the same that, uh, to the thing you have? And also, after reading this patent, is your solution really not obvious? Is it just an obvious improvement or not an improvement at all? And this is the basic search you can do yourself. But when basing any business decision or any other legal or important decision of any kind on that, uh, just uh, do a professional search. They're just a disclaimer as well. So one example of how much money is being I've told you about the European uh, programs, grants, but the industry is also not immune to this problem. So this is um, the cost of automotive R&D time wasted um, on previously patented solutions. So it's $10 billion worldwide. And these are just ways to tell you what you can do with these $10 billion. So you can employ almost 100,000 people, which would be very interesting given the current situation in Europe and uh, worldwide. Uh, so it's something the industry has a problem with as well. Another important question when, you're, uh, when you want to enter the market, because R&D, you can do R&D on patented solutions. It's uh, an exception. You can <coughs> do research. You, ca you just can't commercialize it if you don't have the. If either the patent isn't valid, or you don't have a valid license. So, um, am I infringing on, ex on an existing patent? That's called freedom to operate analysis. Because if you are not, you have freedom to operate. You don't have. This doesn't concern anything about are you going to protect your invention or not. It just uh, that has to do with whether you can sell it without being uh, sued. Um, and given the fact that almost 90% of data in these databases is um, not valid, so these documents are either expired patents or non-granted patents, a very small part are affected. You need to know how to check from a database is the patent valid, valid or, not, or not, and in which country. Um, and we'll see how you check that. And another disclaimer, you never leave this search to yourself. You can do it to have a feeling, but because it requires not only a search of related documents and the analysis of whether it's um, 
valid or not and where. It also needs um, very, very detailed analysis of patent claims to see if you are within the scope or you can maybe escape it in a way. And what's become really popular in um, today's time is so-called IP mapping, and that's actually a word or a term for describing um, of, like, how to derive as many business-related information as you can from um, patent documents. And not only technological data, which, you can, which can help you in uh, strategic, business decisions, strategic business decisions. And it, it's actually uh, searching for relevant documents, uh, finding a pool of them, and then statistically analyzing all the important data you want to find out about, plus text mining of keywords and abstracts to be able to see what are the most important um, terms that, are, that have been um, developed that have been hot in the, let's say, last years. And then advanced visualizations. And what this IP mapping can do to you, and it's usually d delivered to companies in the way of uh, lengthy report, is answers to strategic, strategic business questions. Like what are the trends in the field? Uh, what are the new hot topics? who are the competitors and what are they doing, um, and potential strategic partners, potential acquiries, and as I've said, also inventors as interesting employees. So the, an example of things you can find in a patent landscape report is this about um, uh, regenerative medicine from the uh, British Patent Office. So many of these reports, especially on public health uh, topics are free to use. You can find some also on the World International Property Organization website. And it's interesting reading because, um, especially if you can find one on your technological uh, field. Um, okay, this was also left for the Slovenian one. But you can find uh, in the report most frequent inventors, you can find connections between applicants. Um, you can find also the most um, the most frequent patent uh, patent classifications that are um, present in patents in this field. And in last couple of years, last few years, also um, patent landscapes have been popular. So. Uh, an advanced text mining that produces a kind of a landscape um, producing hills, which are patterns which contain <coughs> most of these keywords. So you can group them according to keywords and from that derive trends, um, most important patenting trends. You can also do these landscapes in timelines, seeing how um, one area has been developing and one has been dying, which ones are um, maybe opportunities um, with less patents. Maybe you can find companies, maybe you need to develop this area and are looking for a company who does that and want to partner with them and so on. And if we just look at the usual technology development process. Um, that's kind of a simple scheme. How you can use all of these searches and information in a certain, in a certain point of this process. So when you are looking for how can you fulfill a need you've identified, these IP landscapes are very handy. Uh, then in concept definition, it's really, and that, that goes as for research in academia and in industry. When you're looking for ideas, it's good to know what exists in patent databases. Um, then prior art analysis is important throughout the process. Um, later in the time of product development, before market, it's 
crucial to do a freedom to operate analysis. Um, and then, even when the product is out, it's very important to monitor um, all of the IP rights connected to the product, to maintain the I your IP portfolio, and also to check for infringers, because if you have a patent and everyone is copying it and you're not doing anything about it, then your patent isn't really doing what it's supposed to do. You're, you're just letting them do it and you might as well not have it. So I'm going to go really quickly through this tool and you're going to have it um, on your handouts so you can go to this link and play with it a bit. It's the biggest freely really available patent database. So worldwide.spacenet.com. It contains more than 70 million. I think it's more around 80 right now. Patent data with almost worldwide coverage. So when you go there, you get to this web page, and this is the menu you like to, which is the one you want to use. An advanced search is something which is flexible enough and not too advanced. So if you want to do advanced um, search, you can use the smart search and then just go to help and you will see how to do it. But today we're just going to see how you can use this one. You have different fields which come out from the bibliographical data, so keywords, and title, abstract, numbers, dates, publication dates, applicant, inventors, and classification. You can look by all of these and combinations. And in this database, when you combine fields, the default opera operator is that. And you don't have to know that just out of your head. Everything is described in the help. So before you start to use it, just to know what you are getting from your search, read the help uh, manual. So in this particular example, we've had, we were looking for a certain protein with a publication number. Um, we didn't write the whole number, we just want all European patents. Because as we've seen, patent numbers contain the first two uh, letters define the state or uh, office where the patent application was filed, and then you have a generic number. So if you just write the first two letters, so the country you're looking for patents which have been published at this office, and that's the European Patent Office. And then we want to see a certain inventor, and if you search, you get certain results. As this, we can find out in the help that if you combine the fields, you will look for data that has this condition and this condition and this condition. But if you want to, see, to search multiple words or, or multiple numbers or multiple inventors, you also want to know how they are combined within the field. And you can also find the answer for this in the help manual. So use it. And also the wildcards, which means if you're looking for a motor, <coughs> you want to look for motor and then, let's say, um, question mark, which stands for zero or one character, which should give you results relating to motor or motors, for example. The results list looks like this. You have highlighted search terms, and you can open records by clicking on them. And you see a document which has all of this bibliographical information and a menu. From this menu, you can find out the answers um, for your questions. But the question that <coughs> usually confuses most of people, and um, we get a lot of questions like, um, I found a, a US patent for the thing I am researching. Can I use it for my research? First, of course, you can use it because research is an exemption. But then second, you need to know not only is the patent valid, but also is it all has it been granted at all, and um, in which countries? So first, is it a patent application or a granted patent? So usually these numbers have these letters afterwards in parentheses, and in most countries, A means patent applications, B means granted patent. And if you want to know what has been granted, you want to look for B documents. 
But how can you know which countries has this inventor applied for a patent? <coughs> so it is written here. It says also published as, um, just before I get to that. So these letters, you can find the whole list for all countries at this link if you are interested. But it's all public. Uh, which countries has the inventor filed a patent in? You get in this line, also published as, so you can see it has been a European uh, application which got through several stages and after every change another document is created in the database. So you can see all the full documents. This is an international application, a US application, a US patent, and an Austrian I think this is a patent, a utility model, which is a sort of short-term patent. So, import, important info. You can also open original documents and uh, search through them or save them for later use or printing. But what, was, what I was talking about before, is the patent valid and where? You can also check in this free database. So this is what is under this code name, Impact Legal Status. You actually get a, a list of all the legal status that the document has been through. So from the very beginning, from filing, you can find these different designated states and what has been happening. And if you scroll down to the end, you can find the most recent data. So it was a European pattern, which has been validated in many states. So you can see the, oops, you can see the recent data which is in 2000, um, 2012 in France. It was um, annual fees were paid to national office. It's an eighth payment year. Patent is valid <coughs> for maximum 20 years. So if you see that they paid in January 2012 for another year, this patent is still valid in these countries. So if you want to sell the same thing in France, you couldn't, or you could, but you could get into trouble if you don't get a license from the patent um, holder or another sort of agreement. Another tool which can, could be interesting if you want to know uh, a bit more about, because patent, uh, this patent is good for searching for documents. It's not good for analysis. It doesn't help you analyze the results at all. So uh, Patent Scope is a free tool from World Intellectual Property Organization. It's a much smaller database. It has seven or uh, eight times less documents at the back, so you don't get as much um, info as you do with the SpaceNet, but they, it gives an um, opportunity for a simple analysis of those. So you get to the website, you also can search like these searches uh, is kind of equivalent to the one on a spasmate I've showed you before. There are always different kinds of them, but you can find out in your own. This uh, interesting, you don't have a default operator between fields, you can change them. And if you search for something, you get the results, which would be down here, but also a kind of top lists of top countries. Um, from this result pool you've got, top um, international patent applica applications, top applicants, top inventors, and the, how the patent number has been changing through different tiers. And you can change this um, graphical representation from table to graphs. So it's a really good thing you can maybe use for uh, analysis or a presentation or something. So this is kind of the main countries for these patent search. Names of inventors with numbers of patents they have. Also, um, number trends through years of uh, patents on this topic. So you can also, if it's a topic you're familiar with, you can speculate on uh, technological cycles and things like that. So it's a very useful tool for analysis. And if there are uh, programmers among you, or developers, this is a great source. 
you can use its raw data from the European Patent Office, and it's the same data the SpaceNet base is um, based on. So um, you, get, you get free access to it, and you can develop your own search tools. A very powerful source. So a lot of websites and small applications have been um, developed, um, even though this tool has been launched a year ago. So we can expect a lot more in the future. Some other free resources you can use. Uh, you will get, get this, so I won't get into it. And this is a nice website which lets you compare um, these tools between themselves. So you can just find the optimal solutions for what you're looking for. And at the end, I, I just have to tell uh, I've talked about patents because that was the topic of my talk. But also trademarks and designs are published in publicly available databases. So maybe you don't, you don't have interest in developing a technological product, but something else. But still you know who your competitors are, and you want to check what they are developing. Or you just want to see what, is their, um, what are the trends in the chair department. Or, um, with, even with industrial designs, they, they uh, can protect packaging or websites even. So they are useful to, to use um, when thinking about new ideas and especially new business ideas. So um, look through them and use them. Also, especially before you decide to use a brand name or a design, it's good to know whether they already exist or um, because if you don't and you get to the similar idea as someone else, you can get into trouble. So if not only when looking for ideas, it's good to check these before you decide on a brand name or a design. Um, and if in any time you want to more info, just go to our website and all of these sources that Bostian had on his presentations can be very useful. And also you can um, write to us. Uh, with anything you would you would like to know, uh, so I would thank you. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to have them now. Otherwise, just uh, write. <laughs> so thanks a lot. I think, yeah. <laughs>